Good morning, shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Um, I'm going to continue on with the Strong Delusion series. Um, we are on no divisions. 1 Corinthians 1.10 And I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Master, Yahushua Mashiach, that you all agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be knit together in the same mind and in the same opinion. What is popular is what is most likely to be folly. That is why people's first thought about the Sabbath day is the first day of the week they call Sunday. Sunday is a lie and is not of the truth because the truth does not change. Hebrews 4 discusses a seventh day, not a first day. Entering into his rest. Hebrews 4, 4 through 6. For somewhere he has said thus about the seventh day, and Elohim rested on the seventh day from all his works. And in this again, if, there, if they shall enter into my rest, since then it remains for some to enter into it. And those who formerly received the Besorah did not enter in because of disobedience. Can we pick which day, which day we like out of the week to rest, or is the day Yahuwah blessed, the one he called the sign of eternal covenant between him and his people forever. Exodus 31, 17 and Deuteronomy 28, 46. The 71 times the Shabbat day is mentioned between Matthew and Revelation is not any day we may choose. Yahushua's reference to the Shabbat day in his end times warning is highly specific. The same warning seems to concern the text at Malachi 4, 4 through 6, directing us to remember the Torah. The fourth commandment has been trodden underfoot due to the beguile beguiling of the dragon. If we rest on the seventh day, who are we obeying? Yahuwah or the dragon? Does Yahuwah change? To observe, practice, or behave, in any other way is a strange fire to Yahuwah, and teachers mu must guard what they teach the sheep. Until the last few years, the meaning of the seven festivals has been sealed. The day of Yahuwah is coming soon, so Yahusha's spirit is revealing the things he is about to do. See Amos 3.7. Truth is being restored to those with ears to hear. Remember the goal is love. 1 Timothy 1, 5 through 8. Now the goal of this command is love from a clean heart, from a good conscience and a sincere belief, which some, having missed the goal, turned aside to senseless talk, wishing to be teachers of Torah, understanding neither what they say nor concerning what they strongly affirm. And we know that the Torah is good if, if one uses it legitimately. Um, the excuse not for us. Replacement theology. The idea Yahuwah has chosen different people and dispensationalism. That Yahuwah has different requirements now and the Torah is annulled. And have both caused pastors to teach their follow followers how the clean or unclean or Shabbat instructions are for others. Not for, not for them. Not for the Christians. They make it seem there are two bodies and different dispensations in their minds. Whether it is a discussion about which day is the Shabbat, if Yahuwah is a trinity, or what his name is, all issues can be settled if scripture is used as the guide. Instead of scripture, men's interpretations of tradition is applied, and we see divisions caused by the problem addressed at the beginning of this book. The question of teaching authority. Yahusha is our teaching authority, not the circus fathers, the Sanhedrin, Joseph Smith, or whoever the current pope may be, or the Jesuit general, since the pope takes orders from this black pope. In the day of distress or tribulation, those who keep and teach Torah will be fine, but the Gentiles will realize something. Yahuwah, my strength and my stronghold and my refuge in the day of distress, great tribulation. The Gentiles shall come to you from the ends of the earth and say, 
Our fathers have inherited only lies, futility, and there is no value in them. Yermiyahu or Jeremiah 16, 19. In spite of having scripture that clearly describes them, the, the current Gentile teachers are convinced that their holidays and customs are all very pleasing to Yahuwah. The keeping of the commandments is frowned upon while they hold tightly to tithing, which empowers, supports, and entrenches them in their lawlessness. Without a shred of the teaching found in scripture, Sunday is one of their strongest promotions of all. A lie must be repeated over and over until it becomes ex accepted as truth, but it doesn't make it true. Repetition does not establish truth. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Yashiyahu Isaiah 5.20 Let the wrong forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Yahuwah, who has compassion on him, and to our Elohim, for he pardons much. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says Yahuwah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from the heavens, and do not return there, but water the arets and make it bring forth bud and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The arets is the earth. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me empty, but shall do what I please and shall certainly accomplish what I send it for. Yahshiyahu Isaiah 55, 7 through 11. Yahuwah's people always had the tendency to mix their worship. We choose not to eat from the wrong tree. Let's guard the commandments and bear good fruit. Yahusha is coming for his bride, the wise virgins. Yahusha has her, has her hand and she loves him and shows it by obeying his commandments from her heart. Doctrines of Demons But the Spirit distinctly says that in the latter times some shall fall away from the belief, paying attention to misleading spirits and teachings of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy, having been branded on their own conscience. 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Oh, Today where did all the beads yeah, come no, from? Pagans, right? pagans, where else? Yeah. Oh. I got five, yeah. Matthew 6, 7. Russell, stop. And when praying, do not keep on babbling like the Gentiles. Russell. For they think they shall be hurt for their many lives. Buddhist, Buddhist Juzu or Mala beads, 108. Catholic chaplet or rosary, 59. Islamic Tasbi, 33 or 99. Teaching people to pray to the dead is called necromancy, a form of divination. Our enemy is a tyrant and forces and enforces false teachings under the pain of death. The apparatus of the world, the beast, reflects the principalities and powers in the heavenlies, the source of real control over the estates of mankind. The, women, the woman riding the beast is Circe, Kirke, or Church, under which is the religious order of the clergy, the nobility, and the laity or common people. Or commoners, and now a fourth estate, the media. All are under the controller, the dragon giving power and authority to a head, to a head of the beast, the office of the papacy. Just in my purple box, baby. Any organization going by the term church is under the direct control of the dragon giving great power and authority to her. Circe or church equals circus. The head of this authority on earth has always resided in an office formerly held by Kaiser or Caesar, the, the Papa or Pope. Ah. <clears throat> has this head taught anyone, has this head taught anyone to obey the covenant of Yahuwah? The ultimate midden, a place to hide demonic activity in plain sight. Great. Right. 
is in a man who appears Look. to be the epitome of goodness. Uh, the end of days, the great tribulation, the day of Yahuwah, the coming of the reapers, and the two witnesses are not things being addressed as his holiness. His office or position is not that of an ambassador of Yahuwah or Yahusha, but instead teaches not to use the name. In the following frame, the prophet Aliyahu is often spelled Aliyah and is commonly known as Elijah, where they, you know, where the Christians put the J, where the Y is supposed to be, just like in Hallelujah. Nazarim are warning the world with Aliyahu's message. Malachi the prophet's warning concerning Aliyahu, the Torah of Moshe and the day of Yahuwah like a, like a furnace, burning like a furnace. Malachi 4, 1 through 6. For look, the day shall come, burning like a furnace, and all the proud and every wrongdoer shall be stubble. All, and the day that shall come shall burn them up, said Yahuwah Zabuah, which leaves to them neither, neither root nor branch. No darnell or wheat distinction here. But to you, but to you who fear my name, the servant of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and leap for joy like calves from the stall. And you shall trample the wrongdoers for, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, said Yahuwah Zavuel. Remember the Torah of Moshe, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Yasharal, laws and right rulings. See, I am sending you Aliyah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and awesome day of Yahuwah. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with utter destruction. Now let's look at the Torah of Moshe to straighten the paths. I am Yahuwah your Elohim, and have no other before my face. You do not bow to images. You do not cast the name of Yahuwah your Elohim to ruin. Remember Shabbat to keep it Kodesh, set apart. Honor your father and your mother. You do not murder. You do not break wedlock. You do not steal. You do not bear false witness against your neighbor. You do not covet your neighbor's wife, house, field, servants, animals, or anything belonging to your neighbor. Also, love one another as I have loved you. These teach us how to love. They are the path in which to walk. They are the everlasting covenant of kindness, and we are to guard them and teach them to the nations, the Gaim. They enable us to discern a good or green tree from a bad tree. Yashayahu Isaiah 8.20 refers to these. To the Torah and to the witness. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no daybreak. Compare the behavior of the wheat and the darnell. Smoke screens, doctrines of demons, and I will read it and show you the pictures. Um, human teachings is like, a, I believe it's like a heavy weight on your head. And religion. Um, then it shows hands holding something. And Revelation 3.1. I can't, I can't read the picture there, but I can show you guys. Okay. The investigation to make the distinction. True wheat, teachers of light, the word of Yahuwah, living, giving truth of Torah. Consistent produces life. And the Darnell, false wheat, teachers of darkness, imitation, imposter, I don't know. Deceptive ads. It's okay, honey. And takes away. Paralyzes. Produces death. And there is no value in it. The Ten Commandments, the word of Yahuwah, are the seeds of Yahuwah's kingdom, producing the good behavior that is pleasing to Yahuwah. He calls his word seed and sent it forth into the world to accomplish his purpose, love. For as the rain comes down and the snow from the heavens, and do not return there, but water the earth, 
and make it bring forth and bud and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So is the word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me empty, but shall do what I please and shall certainly accomplish what I sent it for. Yahshua 55, 10 and 11. Yahuwah's word will accomplish the goal of love. The bad seeds are sown by an enemy and are growing among the good seeds. They will be the first to be taken by the reapers on the day appointed, a future Yom Kafar, the tenth day of the seventh moon, when the earth is harvested. Um, reapers. For more about the day these messengers come, read, read the prophet Yuwal or Joel chapter 2. Yahuwah describes it as a day of darkness and the terror that will be unleashed upon the entire world. And Reapers, I read this in a series um, way back. The false teachers are ravenous wolves. They are not sounding the warning about these reapers. They are going through the cycles of each year, begging for more money to spread their gospel of just believe plus tithe. Paul warned the elders of Ephesus of false teachings or false teachers, ravenous wolves. They are ravenous wolves. Um, and then there's a picture of prayer beads and um, I believe an obelisk or a, an ancient uh, stone um, circle. Um, and I'll show you guys the pictures first. Drunken witchcraft is the bottom left corner. Uh oh, is the next picture after that. And then there's a Buddhist priest or a Buddhist monk and a pope. And I believe probably a Jesuit Illuminati meeting here. Okay. Um, for people to bow down to an inanimate object. They have to be too drunk to operate a motorized vehicle. <laughs> By now you know what is really wrong with them. They have been exposed to doctrines of demons and they are delusional. It is a form of imposed mental illness, a psychosis. Distorted teachings. Isaiah 24, 5, um, 5 and 6. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant, therefore, therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth, earth are burned, and few men left. Doctrines of demons teach us to avoid Torah. Isaiah 8.20 To the Torah and to the witness. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because they, they have no daybreak. Witchcraft defines popular customs, all rebellion. Christmas, the spell of Satan's birthday. You're confusing the rabbit with Easter. Right, the top one right here. Okay. Distinguish this, true wheat and darnell. Doctrines of Yahuwah for the true wheat, taught consistently throughout scripture. True name, Yahuwah. Sabbath, Passover, Shavuot, Sukkot. Doctrines of the Darnell, or the false wheat. Doctrines of demons, men's traditions inherited from Babel, not scripture. False name, L-O-R-D, Baal. <clears throat> Sunday, Easter or Ishtar, Christmas, Halloween, and many other human man-made traditions. Smoke screens of the dragon. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself servants for obedience, and you are servants of the, the one whom you obey, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness? When the time comes for the reckoning, every eye will see Yahusha appear in the skies. Most will not be prepared. <clears throat> And then the bottom picture is smoke screen of dragons. Thus shall it be all the at, at the end of the age. The messengers shall come forth and separate the wicked out of the midst of the righteous and shall throw them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. 
Matthew 13, 49, and 50. Bovine rapture, wicked one taken, righteous ones remain. <clears throat> Men's hearts are so corrupt, lies are quickly accepted. They are misled about the end days and think they are not going to see all the horrible, terrifying events happen all around them. Instead, what they believe, they will be protected from what will happen to them. What they expect is a delusion because they have been led to believe fantasies by masquerading messengers of light. They embrace teachings of error with great enthusiasm. Yermiahu or Jeremiah 17, 9, and 10 explains the problem. <clears throat> the heart is crooked above all and desperately sick. Who shall know it? I, Yahuwah, search the heart. I try the courage and give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. B-Y-N-B. Repeating lies of 10. They become accepted as truth. Well-told lies become immortal. National Socialist Joseph uh, Goebbels. Um, he's in the top right corner. I'll show you after the bottom left corner of this picture. Samuel Clemens, born 1835, Missouri, USA. The history of the race and each individual's experience are thick with evidence that a truth is not hard to kill and that a lie told well is immortal. That was a saying by Mark, Mark Twain. <clears throat> this little picture in the corner. Okay. Is this serving mighty ones whom you have not known? Scapulas, or scapula, originally a large work apron used by monks now small now it's like a small card that you wear around your neck and the bottom picture our lady of lower or lords 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 <clears throat> um the scapula and use of it According to a 1996 doctrinal statement approved by the Congregation for Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacraments, devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel is bound to the history and spiritual values of the Order of the Brothers of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel and is expressed through the scapular. Thus, whoever receives the scapular becomes a member of the Order and pledges him or herself to live according to its spirituality, in accordance with the characteristics of his or her state in life. What is devotion service? Devo devotionum, Latin dedication by a vow of loyalty, prayer, worship, religious zeal, piety, indicated by presence of cult figures, altars, objects, and expressions of service, both publicly and privately. That sounds like witchcraft to me. Altars and cult figures. Very, very bad stuff. How about devotion to the Ten Commandments? Most pastors can't recite all ten, nor do they care to. Uh -uh. Examples of doctrines. Smoke screens taught by demonic entities. To cause straying from Yahuwah's Torah. Evolution. Secular humanism. Nicolaitans, clergy, laity, divisions. Apostolic succession by appointment, not lineage. Dividing of scripture, old and new. Marcion or Marcion. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Sacraments, favor is dispensed throughout priests. That doesn't sound right. Indulgences, paying in advance to sin, yet forgiven. How can a, a, a fleshly human being forgive you? Especially if they're not in the truth and they're not speaking the truth and they're only speaking lies to their whole congregation. Um, devotion to charms, amulets, statues, the monstrance kneeling down to bread. Replacement theology. Israel is now the circus. Once saved, always saved. A maxim. Infant baptism. An infant isn't making the choice to go to the creator and 
infants have been baptized for a very long time, and it, it's it's not supposed to be that way. You have to be knowledgeable of your decision to turn to Yahusha. So an infant baptism doesn't doesn't make sense. Faith, repentance versus unconditional indulgence, legalism, obedience, or eagle, illegalism, disobedience. Fantasy, lie, deception, illusion, dream world. More doctrines of demons, traditions of man. Divisions, denominations, strife, vestments of pagan priesthood adopted. Outward signs of membership. Sunday Shabbat changed to first day by Constantine, 321 CE, an edict. Priesthood, principalities and powers pattern. Celibacy, holy water, signs of the cross, genuflecting, images used for devotions or services, transubstantiation, rosaries, chaplet beads, repetitive prayers, trinity doctrine, occult mysticism, three pillars of G.H. Zohar, purgatory, Indulgences, indulgence of sin, pious acts earn merit, excuse penalty. Supersessionalism, Christianity, inheritor, inheritor of promises to Yasharal. New dispensation, authority to change Torah through Nicolaitans. Bow the knee, and it shows the Pope. How are we deceived? What teaching methods are employed? Aside from re repeating huge lies openly, this is the process used on the masses to deceive them. Casuistry. One. Spe uh, specious or excessively subtle reasoning intended to rationalize or mislead. Equivocation. One, the act or an instance of equivocating. Two, philosophy or logic. Logic, a fallacy based on the use of the same term in different senses, especially as the middle term of a syllogism. As the badger lives in the bank and the bank is in the high street, so the badger lives in the high street. All of the false teaching we, teachings that we hear, new, old, and yet ahead of us, Derive from the use of the two above teaching or techniques. So be aware of them at all times. Be vigilant. Catechism or cate catechesis is employed to teach them. Responsory teaching method. How do demonic entities manage to deceive us? Maxims, casuistry, and equivocation are employed to prop up what sounds plausible, yet is fallacious and deceptive. Repetition of lies form beliefs. Doctrines of demons are not doctrines of Yahu are not doctrines of Yahuwah. Yahuwah's word is superseded by circus traditions, supersessionalism. They will tell your power is invested in them. By what power? The dragon. A lie we often hear. Um, by the power vested in me. By the state and the circus. The dragon. Yahuwah brings together a man and a woman in marriage not the state or will of man. The beast is given his power by the dragon. And I will read the pictures for you. Um, Pope, it says, too much. I think his outfit looks a little too much. Um, there's a big statue of a man's face that women are kissing. Um, and then it shows priest in the corner on the top. And then it shows Hitler on the on the right corner. Come on, let's go kill all of them. 
water vapor. What? So I'll try to get this as close as possible. Here you go, guys. Okay. Um, doctrines of demons or doctrine of Yahuwah. Celibacy. The state of being celibate, unmarried, non-sexual, especially for religious reasons, pertaining to a person who has taken a vow of chastity. Number of times this doctrine is taught in scripture. Zero. You, you are servants of the one whom you obey. Our authority is above scripture. And it shows Nicolaitans down here in the guy's hand. This, the fathers from the catechetical school of Alexandria. Now you, now you tell us. Romans 6.16 Do you not know that to whom you present yourself servants of, obe of obedience, you are servants of the one whom you obey, whether of, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness? Be fruitful and multiply. There was never anything about celibacy. It was about populating the earth. Uh oh, oh, hold on. Sorry, guys. Um, they no longer perceive perceive the idolatry. There's an eye not cleaning the floor. <laughs> Somebody bowing down to an eye. There's an eye. Take these bones, please. They need to be buried. Shall we kiss them first? Says the Pope. What do you mean, idolatry? Where? Cross, wood, holy bones, idols, pagan garments, Dagon hats, sacraments. Um, Mark 8, 18. Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? It appears their hypocrisy knows no bounds. Doc Holliday, film character, Tombstone. Indulgences defined by dragons, woman. The, the Roman Catholic Church claims the power to excuse or release persons from all or part of the suffering coming to them in purgatory. This is done for good acts performed or prayers said. In the Middle Ages, indulgences were granted in, in exchange for donations to the church. Okay. All Saints, Wittenberg, Germany. Okay. 95 Thesis, 31, October 1517. Johann Tetzel, Papal Commissioner, Seller of Indulgences, Sparked the Reformation, Breach with Leo X, the Pope. Definitely indulgences are, are doctrines of demons. Martin Luther protested indulgences. Purgatory is as real as the land of Oz. Divisions are illegal and rebellious. One law, numbers 15, 15, and 16. One law is for you of the assembly and for the stranger who sojourns with you. A law forever throughout your generations. As, as you are, so is the stranger before Yahuwah. One Torah and one right ruling is for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. One body, 1 Corinthians 1.10. And I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our master, Yahuwah, Yahusha Messiah, that you all agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be knit together in the same way or the same mind and in the same opinion. See 1 Corinthians 12. An enemy did this. Parable of the wheat and Darnell. Matthew, or yes, Matthew or Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Another parable he put before them, saying, The reign of the heavens has become like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed Darnell among the wheat and went away. 
and when the blade sprouted and bore fruit, then the darnel also appeared. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you, know, did you not sow good seed in your field? From where then does it have the darnel? And he said to them, A man, an enemy, did this. And the servant said to him, Do you wish then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest you gather up the darnel, you also uproot the wheat with them. The perspective or viewpoint of those who are deceived cause them to think they are the good seed, but in fact are the weeds. The wheat clearly differs from the darnel, only at the harvest, reaper. Let, let both grow together until the harvest, and at, that, at the time of harvest I shall say to the reapers, First gather the, the darnel, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my granary. According to this explanation, the rapture of the darnel comes first, the bad seed. Another doctrine of demons exposed by the, by the word of truth. The repairer of the breach. Nazarim, followers of Yahusha, repa re repairers of the breach, restorers of the covenant. Isaiah 58, 12. And those from among you shall build the old waste places, and you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you would be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Jeremiah 6.16 Thus said Yahuwah, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it, and find rest for yourselves. But they said, we do not walk, walk, or they said, we do not walk in it. Proverbs 28.9 he who turns away his ear from the hearing from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination, overrun by outside teachings, and it shows elephants. Walk the walk, do the word, Torah. One John two, four through six. The one who says, I know him, and does not guard his commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever guards his word, truly the love of Elohim has been perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he stays in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. And then it shows the Pope, Nancy Pelosi, Obama. And um, a bunch of other people and Hitler on the that bottom. Ah, uh, she's kind of old now uh, and no, looks. She looks strange now. She, she is, yes. <laughs> and I believe Obama is running the show. That's what it seems like. Well, what the news? Act the, the news lady um at the at the White House accidentally said um Obama when she meant to say Biden. Um, so it sounds like he's running the show, but, um, I don't know. <laughs> it could have been an honest mistake, but who would make that mistake? Obama's been out of office for a, quite a while now. Elohim is better rendered Elohim, since the Hebrew word begins with the letter Aleph, not A-N. The name of Yahuwah is a, a seal identifying his property. The reapers are coming, but will not harm the wheat. The reapers will be released on the day of wrath. Matthew 13, 36 through, through 43. Then having sent the crowds away, Yahushua went into the house, and his taught ones came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the darnel of the field. And he, he, he answering said to them, he who is sowing the good seed is the son of Adam, and the field is the world. And the good seed, these are the sons of the rain, but the darnel are the sons of the wicked one. And the enemy who, sow them, who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the messengers. As the darnel then is gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be the end of this age. The son of Adam shall send out his messengers, and they shall gather out out of his reign all the stumbling blocks and those doing lawlessness and shall 
throw them in the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine forth as the, as the sun in the reign of their father. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. <clears throat> Hi there, surprise rapture. The wrath of Al Allahim is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Colossians 3.6 the messengers will har harvest the earth on a future Yom Kafar. A heart desiring truth will not be deceived. Deception propelled by desire, your desires, death, corruption, Yahusha's desires, life eternal. Jasher, or I believe, 1 14 and 15. Um, but each one is enticed when he is drawn away by his own desires and trapped. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it has been accomplished, brings forth death. 1 John 2, 16 and 17 Because of all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust of it, but the one doing the desire of Allahim remains forever. Is there life after death? Trespass here and find out. <clears throat> Did you know the name of the writer of the fourth gospel is revealed in the text only by investigating clues and hints carefully? Lazarus, or more accurately, Alizar, Allahim helps. Also, Eliezer, um, Abram's servant, raised from the dead, John 11, 44, and 45. And he who died came out bound feet and hands with wrappings, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Yahushua said to them, Loosen him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Yahudim who had come to Miriam and had seen what Yahushua did, Believed in him. Alazar come forth. Shortest verse. Yehukanan 11.35. Yahusha wept. Writer is speaking of himself. The disciple whom Yahusha loved. Brother of Miriam and Martha of Bethany. Does this look like witchcraft? Maybe a little. A place for the dry bones of the dead. Sedlek. Czech Republic, ossuary, O-S, Latin, bone, bones. It's a bone house, Jim. They're all dead. And they have bone relics all in the Vatican. The mark of the beast. A mark is an outward sign or signal indicating either obedience or rebellion. It's a behavioral trait easily seen in someone having this mark. The sign of the everlasting covenant is Shabbat, the seventh day of each week. It's the mark of Yahuwah's servants. Buying and selling is not done on this day. Those ha having another mark or sign than Shabbat can buy and sell any time they choose. There is a mark, a name, and an image of the beast. The image of the beast, the crux. The oldest occult symbol in all the world is the ancient image that sun that represented the sun, the sun in the sky. The crescent moon is another pagan symbol. Every pagan culture on earth paid homage to the solar crux. It was adopted from the Roman culture of Mithras worship, and the term crux was brought into the Latin translation by Jerome. Image of jealousy, entrance to pagan temple at Luxor. And that'll be in the top right corner. And it has it shows in the middle um, some ancient symbols and the um, Nazi symbol. Um, the faith became backed by the power of the Roman state. All the pagans joined in, bringing with them their familiar trappings. Pagan priestly garments, distinguishing symbols, rank ceremonial processions, pagan holidays, Symbols like obelisks and cruxes, holy water, statues, and chants. More details on this book 
are in fossilized customs. And I did a series where I read the whole book. Um, I made a series of videos. Um, it was quite a while ago. I think I did that book first. Um, Pillar of Jealousy. Ezekiel 8, 4 through 6. And see the esteem of Allahim of Yasharal was there. Like the vision that I saw that I saw in the plain. And he said to me, Son of man, please lift your eyes toward the north. And I lifted my eyes northward. And north of the altar gate, I saw this image of jealousy in the entrance. The image, excuse me, the image of jealousy borrowed from Babel used at Luxor, Egypt at the entrance. On the bottom, you see the big statue monstrance that is pointing to the sky and we were told not to erect these pillars image of the beast 4300 years ago sumer the image of the beast in daniel's time 2590 years ago and this is a sun pillar and then a sumerian incense burner sorry franciscan friar william of Occam. The simplest explanation for some phenomena is more likely to be accurate than more complicated explanations. What happens if we combine these two images into one? The similar object was made to bow down to. Read Daniel 3. A fine wine, a tasteful blend of Egypt and Sumer sun worship. It says um, on the steeple above the church, or next to the steeple. Merely a coincidence, um, an old Roman or um, Egyptian symbol with a hand, um, kind of a statue hand holding a crux with the circle on the top. Um, no Hindu wheel of life. Um, it's okay. This Egyptian obelisk, it's okay, baby. No, he's all, now he's going to be antsy. Come on, Roscoe. Don't be like this, Roscoe. Roscoe, please sit. Please. Sit. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't want good. to show. I had to cut his arm out of his shoulder. Oh. This Egyptian obelisk was quarried so 1300 BCE, oh, I know. God. Moved from Alexandria to Rome in the first century. Obviously, pagan sun worshippers brought it to Rome. One reason may be that Satan's seat moved to Rome in the first century. 1586 moved 275 yards and erected in front of the Vatican. I'm, I'm not, I didn't mean to yell. Maseroth symbols to bow down to. Acts 7, 42 and 43. So Allahim turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven as it has been written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring slaughtered beasts and offerings unto me during 40 years, I know, in the wilderness, O house of Yasharal? And you took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your mighty one, Kayum, images which you made to bow before them. Therefore I shall remove you beyond Babel. The sign of Chaldean religion. Image Salem, Remem resemblance, representation, is a sign of the true faith a cross. Where did the cross come from? When did it become associated with the Mashiach of Yasharal? Who did this? Was Yahusha hung on a cross or a stake? Has someone pulled the wool over your over our eyes? Hang on, everybody. You gotta get the puppy. That's cool. You gotta stay calm. For sixteen hundred years now, beginning around four hundred CE, the world has been conditioned to accept a visualization. Um, that is not only inaccurate, but an abomination in the eyes of our Creator. For 1,200 years prior to the Protestant Reformation, the Latin Vulgate was considered to be inspired and the prize translation, much like the KJV, is cherished today. Sometimes we hear someone say, if the King James Version was good enough for the apostles, it's good enough for me. 
well, the apostles wouldn't have had the KJV version because it has the J name in it that was on, and then letter J wasn't created until 500 years ago. So that doesn't make any sense at all. That should pull people right out of the delusion. <laughs> what would this look like to Yahusha's followers in the first century? It would look like witchcraft. I believe it would look like witchcraft for sure. Um, one second here. Okay. Um, when Eusebius Heron Heronymus Sophronius, or Jerome, translated the Greek text into Latin called the Vulgate. He chose a word that did not match with what the Latin already had as a perfect parallel world, or word, parallel word, sorry. The Greek word for the object Yahusha carried and was nailed to it to is storos. The Latin word for this term is storos. The ST component is the root and gives the meaning of an upright pole, as we see reflected in other words like post, staff, stave, stick, strut, mainstay, stock, stump, stake, mast, and so on. Vulgate Latin, dominant over 1,200 years, 400 to, 600, to, to 1,600 CE. Constantine and Jerome continued the trend of the catechetical school of Alexandria, Egypt, by blending syncretiz syncretizing ancient symbols and ideas of Babel. Um, you can find out more about the Catechetical School of Alexandria in um, a new video, the Nazarene Documentary, on YouTube. Crux, 1,200 years of tradition based on error. Greek, Storos, Septuagint used X-U-L-O-N, Zulon, which means wood. Zulon is the same as Staros. The Greek word Staros properly signified a stake, an upright pole, mast, stick, staff, or wood fencing stake, not a cross. Homer, about 1,000 years before the time when the, when the Gospels were written, used the word Staros of an ordinary pole or stake or a single piece of timber, and this was the meaning and uses of usage of the word throughout the Greek classics. Four or five centuries before the time of the Gospels, in the literature of that time, it never means two pieces of timber placed across one another at an angle, but always one piece alone. Cross, first used by Jerome in translation, 391 through 403. Latin storo. Latin word directly associated with the Greek storos was ignored and crux was used instead. E.W. Bullinger, um, 1837 to 1913. Hugo Ethelbert. Companion Bible by, by Dr. Bullinger. Appendix 162. Direct quote. Please forgive terms. In the Greek NT, two words are used for the cross on which the LORD was put to death. One, the word storos, which denotes an upright right, pole or stake to which the criminals were nailed for execution. Two, the word zulon, um, which generally denotes a piece of a dead log of wood or timber for fuel for any other purpose. Um, hold on, sorry. Um, for any other purpose. It is not like dendron, which is used of a living or green tree, as in Matthew 21.8, Revelation 7.1, Three and eight, seven and nine, four and and etc. Um, as this latter word zulon is used for the former storos, it shows us that the meaning of each is exactly the same. Homer uses the word storos as an ordinary pole or stake or a single piece of timber, and this is the meaning of the usage of the word throughout the Greek classics. There is nothing in the Greek of the NT even to imply two pieces of timber, ever. Scholar or theologian. That's who this guy was.
And next time, I will be te teaching about I identity movements. Roscoe! Teaching authorities targeting races. Wormwood. Um, Queen of Easter, Queen of Heaven. Origins of Easter. People are decorating trees with eggs to celebrate Easter with fertility symbols. Um, errors in Acts 12, 4 in the KJV only. Easter's emblem, the Great Mother. Um, the Queen of Heaven, the Parthenon. Um, the names of pagan deities, uh, which are reflected, our days and months reflect the names of pagan deities. The pagan origins of Roman months, mm -hmm. the great mother Circe, Kirke, or church, when Passover was overtaken by Easter. Polycrates in, continues to explain the Passover, um, Easter impregnation of the great mother, and the mother of harlots, I will be teaching on in my next lesson. Um, I love you all, and I hope you all have have a wonderful Shabbat. Yahuwah bless you all. Shalom.